Welcome to the Postpartum Coach Podcast, where we embrace our needs as moms, we learn to lead ourselves first, then our families, and where we create our own healing from the inside out to find our way to the work we were meant to do in this world. I'm your host, a fellow mom of three and a certified life coach, Lizzie Langston. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Postpartum Coach Podcast. I am officially in Costa Rica. Um, Although I'm not in my backyard, I happen to be staying at a little hotel by myself for a couple of days. Um, My husband, long story short, he went back to the US to get our dog. We didn't bring our dog when we first came because the weather was too hot. And there's rules about when you have a dog under the airplane, you know, it can't be above a certain temperature. So uh, about a month after getting here as a family, just the people, the human family, (laughs) the dog finally got here. But to do that, I was by myself with the kids in Costa Rica for six days and um, six nights. And I was just like, my system was overwhelmed and I could feel myself starting to decline in my, uh, my health. And so you can even hear I'm a little stuffy today, but I've got my essential oils. I've got the screen door open and a gorgeous garden outside and it's been raining on and off, and this hotel is beautiful, and I have healthy food. I'm so blessed, and I'm so grateful to be sharing this little moment with you. I've been watching, um, like, not Hallmark movies, but like the cute, just sweet little romantic comedies, and eating vegetable chips, um, and ordering room service. I have not left my room, like, since I got here. <laughs> And it's amazing. So I'm so happy to share some of this time with you. I honestly wasn't planning on on working on my business or like recording a podcast episode, but I um, I was just kind of in the membership. Um, so I, I have a membership. Hi, by the way, for those who don't know me, my name's Lizzie. <laughs> and I have a private membership for people who want to work with me closer, excuse me. And it's the postpartum coach podcast or sorry, the postpartum coach membership. So in the Facebook page, I was just like coaching people on their posts and catching up and checking in on people. And, um, one of the posts I was kind of responding to her and it just hit me this concept of emotional hustle. So I'm really wanting to, to talk to you about it today and record it while I have it fresh. And I hope that it's useful to you. So I think the term hustle, we typically associate with business. I are like side hustles and, um, you know, hustling in your job or things like that, kind of a rush. And I want to apply that today to how we experience emotion and the way that we handle our emotions. Um, I've actually, side note, I've been thinking a lot about uh, I've just been observing. I've been observing clients. I've been observing myself. I've been thinking a lot about my trajectory of, um, how I've changed since I found coaching and then the more holistic, like mind body healing and yoga and, um, meditation and all these things that I integrate. Cause if you don't know in the, in the postpartum coach membership, we have, um, coaching every week, meditation a couple times a week and yoga once a week starting this next month. So I've just been reflecting a lot about, uh, emotions. And what I've realized is that they really are the foundation to your experience of your life. If you want to change your life, the best place to start is changing how you define emotions. I mean, just getting to know better what they really are. What is an an emotion, a vibration in your body, right? This energy that swirls in us as, as energetic beings. And what do you do with them? Observing yourself. What, what do you do with your emotions? Do you feel them? Do you subconsciously, this is what so many of us do before we kind of really consciously come into our own as adults a lot of times when we're kind of shifting between childhood and truly being in charge of our own life, like I want you to ask yourself for a second, are you truly in charge of your life? Are you um, still depending on your parents for things, not just materially, but 
emotionally? Have you really done the discovering of who you are? Have you taken time and space to pursue a passion or a hobby? And there's no right or wrong answer or timing for any of this. Just consider where you where you are. How are you doing on that front? But what I've realized is that one of the marks of adulthood is you know, usually we associate with like buying a house and all these external things, but really it's this inner working of what you do with your emotions. That's really, to me, what I've realized makes an adult from a child, because we all know people, even grandparents or parents who are still children in, in emotional ways, even though they have nice houses and they're older. So there's no escaping like, and like, I'm sorry if this doesn't feel good to think about, but we all have work to do on this. So if it doesn't, you're not alone. It's something that I also come up against from time to time as we, again, bump up against our childhood sort of behaviors and, and patterns and stuff. But anyway, as I was saying, do you feel them? Do you feel them? And I think so many of us subconsciously don't. And so there's kind of three degrees of hustle emotionally that then turn us into, so I want you to equate like the more hustle emotionally, and I'm going to explain what that really means and looks like in a minute and this sort of spectrum, but the more hustle you do as I'll define it, the more, the less connection you're able to have, the less emotionally available you are. And oftentimes the more health issues that can come up, including mental health, including postpartum, including your body never going back to normal. And, um, I'm not speaking for every single physical ailment ever. I think, um, there can be exceptions and stuff, but, um, this is also interrelated. So, okay. Emotional hustle is when we are trying to feel better as fast as possible and be happy as much of the time as possible. This is like, think, think, um, I don't know, think happy ever, happily ever after, think Disney movies, think, um, every American trendy magazine. It's all about how can we feel better, whether it's trying to have better sex or, um, trying to have a better marriage. And it's not wrong. It's not wrong to want to feel good, but, um, when we're chasing feeling good and when we are not able or willing or comfortable feeling the uncomfortable, when we're really upset, if somebody takes away our happy or we perceive it to be that way. And when we're resentful, when we don't know how to become happy for ourselves. And so, and when we basically just try to wriggle ourselves out of, getting to the place in our lives where we're at peace feeling the negative. We're okay to grieve. We're okay to um, feel sadness and hurt instead of turning it into sarcasm or anger or, you know, a cold shoulder. So where we're not um, trying to get out of feeling anything. And I just want you to reflect for a moment By the way, if you've ever been my client, when I record the public podcast, I think of you and like, I think of, I also think of, I see people's faces, even though I don't actually, I haven't actually seen people's faces. Like sometimes through the spirit, I just feel your presence with me. Like, even though you're not with me energetically, I'm very, very super, super connected to you my audience, like my, that sounds weird to say my audience, but like my sisters that, um, are sharing light with me in this space and have maybe even done so in the past as clients and maybe will in the future. I just want you to know that I'm just so connected to you. And, um, I feel like that's such a gift from God that I, I've been given and that we can have is to feel connected despite, you know, with technology, it's just so amazing. I'm so grateful anyway. So, um, Yeah. Emotional hustle is basically trying to, whether consciously or subconsciously, trying to get out of feeling the negative at all costs. And again, I just want you to consider, do you do this? How diligently do you just open yourself to feeling the negative versus you feel it coming on and you want to blame it on somebody. You want to distract yourself with Netflix. Now there are healthy-ish ways to 
you know, not feel a negative feeling like going on a run or whatever. But if, if you were to be challenged to, or to be asked to, or if you were to find out that the best thing for you was to, um, just really feel something all the way through something negative, something uncomfortable, would you do it? Would you know how to do it? Have you ever done that? Have you ever watched yourself or seen yourself do that? Have you ever been able to witness somebody else in your life do that? I would say a lot of us did not grow up with emotional adults. Like a lot of us did not grow up with people who knew how to, who were equipped because honestly, yeah, we just, it's just not all of us did. And so if the answer is like, honestly, I don't do well with negative emotions. And, and here's how, you know, by the way, if you're kind of clueless here and you're like, I don't know, like that's probably a sign that you're not feeling a lot of feelings because the, I don't know means really that I'm not connected. I'm not listening. I'm not observing. Okay. And don't feel bad about it. Just know that that's part of like step one to changing your life into healing postpartum and beyond. Um, and this reprogramming into becoming like an emotional butterfly instead of an emotional caterpillar <laughs> is, is the witnessing and and the observing and the, and the watching. And so this is where it starts. So no worries. We're in this together. So today, what I want to do is I want to paint the picture from where you might be now, or maybe where you've been and sort of these three phases of emotional hustle that I've definitely gone through and I'm still kind of going through but I'm, I'm far enough through them that I can see them clearly. And I wanted to share them with you. So phase one, this is like beginner phase. This is emotional, um, hustle at its finest is where we don't even have a dialogue within ourselves about our emotions. And we're just floating like, like, like if you were a surfer on the ocean, every, every negative emotion or positive that you feel, um, you, you just kind of like, here's, here's the example. Okay. If you're a surfer, emotional hustle at its finest, when we're kind of more immature in our ability to process and be with and comfortably process the negative and the difficult and the uncomfortable emotions of life, it would be like, if you were a surfer who only surfed the good waves, and if there was a not so good wave, you let it pass by you. Now, in surfing, that's actually a decent strategy. You conserve energy that way. Conserve, not conserve. <laughs> you conserve energy. Like you're, you're like, yeah, of course you would only ride the good waves. So maybe this is a crappy example, but I want you to consider that um, emotional adulthood, or that, which is the opposite of emotional hustle, is when you are willing to surf every wave that comes up, all of them. And you're not skipping and you're not saving for later and you're not buffering because what happens when we skip and save for later or just is we get really anxious. So if you have a lot of anxiety, what's probably going on under the surface for you with your emotional life is you're not feeling everything. And maybe you just don't know how that's usually the case. So that's, that's what I want to say about emotional hustle is a lot of the time it's because we never were actually taught how to not hustle. And so emotional hustlers turn into very anxious mamas and a lot of postpartum anxiety and a lot of nervous system, um, tap out because we're not processing and feeling all the things. Okay. Okay. Before I move on to the next sort of degree and maturing or the, um, kind of mellowing and less hustling emotionally, I want to give one more, maybe everyday example. So, um, let's say that your husband said something and doesn't matter what it was, but you're feeling sad. Um, and you're also feeling a little bit angry. Okay. So emotional hustle is when we're going to go get in his business and try to change what he said, try to confront him about it in a heated way, because we, instead of feeling the anger, okay, now, by the way, this could be a little triggering, right? Because if I talk through this and you're like, oh my gosh, that's what I do. I want to shield you from shame. Okay. There's no reason to feel shame about this. You're here to learn. All of us start out as emotional children and 
we actually, unlike physical maturity, which just happens kind of on its own, the emotional maturity is not the same way. We have to like seek it out and make it happen. And nobody does that for us. And a lot of our parents never even teach us this stuff. So don't worry if, if you're like, oh, I'm definitely an emotional hustler. It's okay. <laughs> That's why we're here. Come join my membership. Like come learn the thing. Okay. Keep listening today. Um, but, uh, yeah. And so emotionally hustling would be a couple things. You could confront him with, without really feeling the anger through or getting curious and quietly taking it off by your, you know, going secluding yourself and just, um, asking yourself why you're angry and simmering it down and then coming back to him, not calm for his sake, but calm because you, you want to be productive and not like spraying your emotions everywhere. You want to be kind of in control and, and mature. Right. And so, um, emotional hustling would be, yeah, confronting super fast and hot, you know, coming in hot or alternatively, doing stuff like, you know, telling him you're not mad, but you're actually mad and then treating him like garbage and being really passive and then aggressive. Um, or it could even be just brushing it under the rug and, um, and pretending like it didn't happen or like going and, um, going and shopping. That's something I used to do a lot is just shopping it off, you know? So these are ways that, um, we hustle, we try not to feel the negative emotions. Okay. So that's an example of emotional hustling. Now, when I first found coaching and I learned about the model and I learned about how thoughts create feelings, when I, um, and then as I got even more into coaching, I learned how to process any emotion. And not only did I learn how to do it, like the technical steps in my body, But which by the way, I I teach this in my, the postpartum anxiety course and in the membership, but I also actually started doing it. Like I remember one time I tech, I reached out to my coach and I kind of wanted her to like offer me, I, I I was at the point where I was like, okay, so with this second phase, kind of the characteristics of maybe a little less emotional hustle, but still some is we've gotten to the point where we can identify and take responsibility for how our thoughts, our own thoughts create our feelings. We've figured that out. We're not trying to change our husbands, trying to make him eat his words and take back what he said. We are capable of recognizing that our own thoughts are what create our pain. And we are able to go inward and say, okay, what am I thinking that's making me feel this way? But this this, the way we're still hustling is we're like, okay, well, I'll just change my thoughts. So yes, we, we can take responsibility for our feelings. We know that we create them, but we're also trying to hurry and change them so that we can feel better. So there's still this, this tone of wanting to feel better as quickly as possible. We're still parenting our children as if it, when they're upset, we're like really trying to make it better. Okay. We're not, um, we're not really trying to help coach them through just feeling it. We're not open to wanting them to feel it. We're really trying to, we, we, we still think it's our job to make our kids feel better. And we think it's our job to make us feel better. Um, even though we might know about processing emotions, we might try to occasionally, but really it's mostly on a, on a, um, intellectual level, the whole processing emotions thing and the whole thoughts create feelings thing is lived, but we're still trying to hurry back to feeling good despite knowing some tools. Okay. So then the last phase of emotional hustle, and this is the goal. This is what I I hope is inspiring to you. This is what I'm still working towards. And this is, um, where it gets really good. I want, like, I kind of think when I think of the opposite of emotional hustle, it's like emotional presence. You are just completely present with any sensation that ever comes up in your body. And there's a lot less thinking when you're starting to feel something. There's a lot less thinking about why did you get feeling that way? Thinking about what happened going into, there's a lot less going into the past and analyzing or going into the future and worrying. And there's a lot more presence with this moment and with this breath and with this 
sensation in your body, whether it's anger, whether it's sadness, whether it's grief and loss, whether it is, um, frustration, whether it is, um, annoyance, any emotion, any, any energy, any sensation as the energy passes through your body, you are able to kind of turn off your mind and go into your body and be with it and ride that wave. Going back to the surfing analogy, even if it's not a good wave, even if it spits you up on the shore, even if it breaks your surfboard, even if, um, you know, there's like a bumpy little rock that you kind of have to surf over. It's maybe not ideal, but you surf all the waves and you see, you have the ability to find the beauty in every moment. It doesn't mean that you never, um, change how you feel intentionally, but there's no hustle to do that. You're not desperate to do that. You're not hurrying to do that. And I believe that the only way we're going to call this emotional presence. Okay. So there's emotional hustle. Then there's like intellectually emotional presence, but still hustling in the body. And then this last phase, emotional presence is when your body and your mind are doing a give and take. And your mind's not always trying to manipulate and control what your body is doing. And you trust your body and you, you, you ride things out in your body. And you turn off your mind. You know how to turn off your mind, right? Isn't this amazing? This is like the telltale characteristic of emotional, not even just emotional maturity, just like human development almost is how connected is your brain and your body? Are you able to leave your brain and go into your heart? And in in the membership, actually, I have the most beautiful. So, okay, let me just side note here. I got to tell you this in my membership. Okay. The postpartum and coach member, the postpartum coach membership. I have a private podcast and every coaching call and every meditation I do is you are able to view it live or you're able to view the video replay, or you're able to listen to it in audio form on a, on the private podcast. So if you're busy and you're driving, you know, you can still be doing meditations. You can, I mean, don't close your eyes while you drive, (laughs) You can still be listening to coaching calls and getting something from the coaching because your coaching is their coaching. So I have a meditation on the podcast that's been really popular. People have been liking it, which is the, um, the one where I help you literally like walk out of your brain and go down into your body. And for some of the women in there, I'm pretty sure I know for most, a lot of us, it's the first time that we've done that, that we've ever actually consciously left our brain and gone into the body with our brain quiet and experienced what that's like. So come join the membership. Just go to lizzylangston.com forward slash course. And that's where you'll see the course, the membership or both. You can do either one or both. Um, anyway, so yeah, in that last category, emotional presence, it's where you learn. And this is one of my philosophies that the sensation sensation is actually the way to navigate emotion, not thought. And you start to work with the tangible energy of the emotion itself. And you learn how to move that energy and you learn how to literally calm your body and to calm your mind. And there's this beautiful give and take and this balance between body and mind. When you learn this anxiety, isn't a thing. Anxiety is basically the price we pay when either consciously or usually unconsciously, unwittingly, we're not processing things in real time. And so they're getting stored. And when they get stored and stored and stored, there's a buildup there. Okay. And it's, it's not our fault. A lot of it's not our fault. We've never been taught this stuff and we have stuff that happens to us like birth trauma, for example, that wasn't our fault. And some of it's just crazy and not asked for. So, um, I want to give you hope that you can do it differently than your parents did and you can heal yourself postpartum. And my membership is the perfect place to start. It's exactly, I'll meet you where you are. And there's, um, the beautiful part about the membership is that there's something there, no matter what level you're at. So I have some clients in there 
that but when the time at, at the time that I opened the membership, they'd been working with me for like 18 months. And then I have some people in there who um were like within you know maybe two or three months they've been working with me and some who have joined the membership and never worked with me one-on-one ever or in you know in my group coaching before the membership at all so um there's something for everyone and no matter what level you're at i don't want you to be worried about like oh well i don't know any of this stuff that's okay it doesn't matter what level you're at you will get what you need so just trust the universe trust that you will get what you need and come join us i'll see you inside i love you guys Thank you so much for listening to the podcast. If you have a minute, just go leave a little star review, but more than anything, just check out the membership. If you, if you want to do this work, love you. Have a good day. Hi, my darling friend, Lizzie here. If you love the content here on my podcast, then you need to check out the postpartum coach membership. My membership is where you can bridge the gap between listening and understanding healing postpartum on a logical level and then applying it and feeling change. That's what we do in the membership. The most valuable tool that I have for you in my membership by far is the postpartum anxiety course. It's my course where I walk you through my three part postpartum healing process. You can watch or listen to the course. I made it for moms, digestible and to the point. Then you've got a private podcast, a members only Facebook community, as well as the trifecta of postpartum healing, weekly coaching, meditation, and yoga. You do not want to miss my membership if you are postpartum and are serious about healing. So go to lizzielangston.com forward slash membership today and step into your healing. That's lizzielangston.com forward slash membership. I'll see you inside my love.